So the evidence-based treatment for eating disorders for children, for adolescents, and even young adults is called FBT, which is an acronym for family-based treatment. And unfortunately, it's a radical idea that families are best equipped to help their children and their loved ones through an illness. So the idea is that, well, first, I guess I'll counter it with what's happening right now. What's happening right now is there's a lot of people, a lot of adolescents in one-to-one -one therapy. They're going to talk to a provider who tries to motivate them to change their behaviors or tries to help them with their body image. And the parents are really excluded from treatment. If you thought that your 15-year-old was struggling with substance use, you would, when your 15-year-old goes to soccer practice, search their bedroom, look under their mattress, look in their closet, and make sure there were no substances. Make it difficult for them to act on their urge to use substances. The same thing is true with eating disorders. So in FBT, we task the parents with structuring the home environment for pro-health behaviors. Make it difficult for them to act on their urges doesn't mean the urges are going to go away overnight, but by eliminating the ability to act on them, it'll start the urges having less and less impact. So that might be if your child was struggling with vomiting after meals, it becomes a family rule that after meals, unlimited screen time. You can be on your phone as much as you want, but you need to be where I can see you. No showering after meals, no being alone in your bedroom. Um, so that's an example of what FBT looks like. We call it FBT++ because while FBT has been shown in numerous randomized controlled trials to be the best, we also know it's really hard work. A lot of people have more than one kid. They have jobs, they have aging parents, they have other stressors on them in addition to their child's eating disorder. So what Equip does is provide them with the support for the practical aspects of it. A family mentor who's been there themselves who can say, Stop fighting with them over eating a salad. Like let's give them um, a milkshake every night. Practical ways to do nutrient dense um, nutritional rehabilitation is just one example. I love uh, the idea, what a radical idea that these are family illnesses. I mean, as someone who's in recovery myself, if I don't have all of my family uh, rowing with me in this, and if I don't have uh, some of my fellow, as we call them in, in my recovery, trudgers, we're all trudging the road of happy destiny. We're in it together. You get support from being in the herd, as they say, in the team. And so, you know, doing this on your own or in an isolated way belies the nature of these illnesses, which thrive on secrecy which thrive on isolation. And so I love FBT, family-based therapy. Because that F in family isn't just for structuring your home environment for, for health. It's also about giving you a reason to recover. It's being with siblings. It's being at Boy Scouts. It's playing soccer. It's spending time outside of treatment and building a life worth living. We know that eating disorders and a number of other mental illnesses, have, eating disorders though, have some of the strongest genetic and neurobiological underpinnings of any mental illness. So it's really not that people are choosing not to eat and engage in pro-health behaviors, it's that their brains are literally not letting them. And put that way, it's not only ineffective, but frankly, it's kind of cruel to treat eating disorders as individual illnesses. When I was deep in my illness, you know, there were certain points where, I mean, for a long period of the illness, I did not want to get better. I wanted to be sick forever. And that wasn't my fault at failing. That's part of the illness. That's a core part of an eating disorder is not knowing how sick you are and not wanting to get better. You know, in many ways, we're not... Uh, Providers are not incentivized right now to get people better. And I think that's at the crux of it. You want to think about how do I build a system in which at the end of the day, what do I care about is actually are people returning to living their lives? Are they getting better? And are they going on to be able to live free of their illness? And right now in a fee-for-service environment, we're not tracking that. There are no outcomes. I mean, very few eating disorder centers right now have outcomes. And if they do, it's like day one of treatment and end of treatment. Did you gain weight? And God, I hope you did if you were 24 seven in, in an environment. But the real question is what happens after? Can you go home and be able to implement those skills into your daily life and continue on um, living a recovered life? And I think anecdotally, we saw that the answer was no, with relapse rates upwards of 50%. So we had to begin to engage in conversation around we actually want the same thing. We want these people to, you know, get better, go on to live life. And you actually look at a system where we look at people 
after the illness, um, that's at the end of the day, what we want to look at is did they, did they get better? And so how do we design a system that's incentivized around that?